Next, downgrade fears sweep Europe. We'll have an update. JP Morgan slides after reporting quarterly results, and hemlines are climbing. Maybe stock prices will too later in the show. Here's your morning briefing for this Friday in Europe. A senior Eurozone source saying downgrades are coming later today. Let's go to Axel Thruffel in London. Axel, what can you tell us? Well, it's, it's amazing how quickly uh, this market is reacting across the board to this, uh, to this news. Uh, as you said, a senior Eurozone government source uh, says the S&P has uh, said it's going to uh, downgrade several Eurozone countries, not including Germany, later on in the day. Whether or not uh, this is a leak from S&P uh, is unclear, but as I said, markets really reacting uh, very, very fast. It seemed that uh, the fears uh, of these downgrades had been put on the back burner for a few days, or at least for a while, but they're clearly back to the four now. Uh, the euro shot down below 127. That was quite a move. Stocks are all down. U.S. futures are down. Um, we were on track for a fourth week of uh, gains in the stock markets here, but it doesn't look good now. The Bund is up given its safe haven status, but Italy's 10-year yield uh, is back up to about 6.8 percent, reflecting the worry uh, in the market here on the back of this uh, Ronda. And Axel, meantime, S&P just saying it has no comment on those reports of imminent downgrades of the Eurozone countries. We'll watch that clo uh, story closely. On another topic, debt negotiations from Greece are picking up steam. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, this is a complicated story, but there is a lot of debate on this critical issue of forcing private bondholders in Greece to share in the pain and take haircuts on their holdings. Uh, it's a critical part uh, of this story. There's been a lot of toing and froing on the issue. Remember that Angela Merkel has said this is something that needs to be done in Greece and Greece alone for it to get through to the, uh, the next round. Others, such as the central bank governor, of Cyprus, uh, also on the ECB governing council, have said this should not be forced. So clearly a big debate. Last night there was talk that Greece was, is going to try and push through a clause that makes debt restructuring binding for all investors once a certain percentage has been agreed. That's the latest. So again, very much on tenderhooks about this too, Rhonda. All right, Axel, thanks. We'll talk to you later. Apple fans clash with Beijing police. <laughs> The riot taking place outside an Apple store after customers who waited in lines for hours were told they would not be able to buy the iPhone 4S at this location. A source said police ordered the closure of the store while Apple said it was concerned about the safety of its customers. The phone did go on sale at other locations in Beijing and across China. Apple launched its latest phone there and in 21 other countries today. J.P. Morgan reporting a 23 percent decline in quarterly profit that met expectations. The European debt crisis hurting trading and deal making. CEO Jamie Dimon says the bank is seeing signs of improvement in loan demand and credit quality as the economy recovers. Shares, though, are falling today. They're down about 15 percent over the past year. Novartis is cutting nearly 2,000 jobs in the U.S. ahead of the patent expiration of its top-selling blood pressure drug, Diovan. Novartis is the latest in a long line of drug makers cutting their sales forces as the industry faces its biggest wave of patent expirations ever. AstraZeneca and Sanofi have made similar moves. In international news, using techniques more familiar to George Smiley in Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, the Obama administration warned Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khomeini, that closing the Strait of Hormuz would be crossing a red line and provoke the U.S. The New York Times said the secret communications channel was chosen to underscore privately to Iran the depth of American concern. One military researcher told the paper the Iranian surface fleet would be at the bottom of the ocean, but they could score a lucky hit. No word on an Iranian response to the White House. On the lighter side now, our photo of the day. A majestic view of a biker competing in the 2012 Dakar Motorsports Race, which goes from Argentina to the Peruvian capital of Lima. Competitors representing 50 countries are taking part in this long-distance event. And finally, could the stock market rally this year? The answer is yes, if we take our cues from the fashion runway. Check out these short skirts at this fashion show in Brazil. The hemline index, developed by an economist in 1926, says that hemlines on women's dresses rise along with stock prices. So it looks like we are in for a pretty good year for the markets. 
That's your morning briefing for this Friday. I'm Rhonda Schaffler. And be sure to watch Reuters Insider coverage of the World Economic Forum from Davos, Switzerland, beginning January 24th.